Um, hi. Hello guys, welcome back to my channel. If you are brand new here, my name is Nikki and this is my book nook. Y'all, today I'm finally doing my first ever book recommendation video centered around a specific trope. You guys have been asking for these for so long and I'm finally here to deliver. Today we are talking about books that contain the trope of touch her and you die. You guys might be thinking, you know, this is the first trope video you've done and this is the one you choose. Are you okay? The answer is no. Um, no, I'm just kidding. I'm fine most of the time. But really, in all honesty, this is not a trope that I like necessarily seek out or need or want in every single book that I read or anything like that. But it just so happens that so many books that are my favorites and ones that I end up loving all just kind of happen to contain this trope fairly often. So this list was really easy for me to compile. You might be thinking that you know, all these books are gonna be like the exact same thing, like they're all gonna be mafia romances and that's just like boring. No, I feel like I have curated a pretty good list here of really like different genres and vibes. Like we do have some mafia vibes, but we also have some fantasy, just some like general nonfiction. I really think there's like something here for everybody. So yes, I have a lot of books to talk about today. I'm gonna try my best to keep it concise, but you guys know that I like to ramble. So no promises, let's just get into it. So the first book I wanna talk about is The Sweetest Oblivion by Danielle Laurie. This is the first book in the Maid series. This actually is a mafia romance and I did that on purpose because I wanted to start this video off with kind of the type of book that this trope is most known for and it just fits it so well and it's so beautifully done. Basically this story follows a girl named Elena Abelli. Her family is like one of the most powerful families in the mafia in New York and her sister at the start of the story has just been arranged to marry this man named Nico. He is the head of another one of the biggest, strongest families in the mafia in New York as well. Them getting married is like creating a great alliance between the two families. It's very important. Arranged marriage is like a super common trope within the mafia romance genre and so elena is actually known she gets the nickname the sweet abelli because she is just like known as being like the nice sister she's very sweet she always wears pink and like nobody has ever really had a problem with her but elena did do something that kind of like tarnished her image tarnished her family's image a little bit and her father for that reason is kind of like embarrassed of her we kind of learn what that is throughout the story but he basically says that she's not fit for marriage, which is why he put up her sister to marry Nico. So Elena and Nico literally despise each other when this book starts, like they butt heads like crazy. She is the sweet of Ellie, but like he brings out this like new different side of her that is not so sweet. And it's so interesting to see that like fire in her come out. And it's just like a nonstop clash of like, I hate you, but also there's like maybe something deeper here and there's so much tension, so much angst, so much suspense. Nico is the definition of that guy that like is just a total badass, like mafia man, kills people on a daily basis, but like has this just ridiculous sweet spot that he can't stand and can't explain for Elena. So this book totally fits this trope, like to a T without giving anything away, like quite literally touch her and you die. It's a great time. I haven't read the rest of the books in this series, but they are kind of like companion novels. Like it is a series, but each book focuses on a different couple. So I'm really excited to see where the next one goes. Next, switching up the genre completely, I want to talk about Crave by Tracy Wolf. This is a part of the greater Crave series. You might be thinking when you're looking at this that it looks very familiar. It looks like a very certain uh, vampire romance that we all know and love. Not everyone loves it. Some people like to be a hater about it, but it's literally the book that made me fall in love with reading and I will fight to the death for its name. I don't know why I got so aggressive there, but anyways, this book looks a lot like Twilight and I'm aware of that, but it really isn't that much like Twilight except for the fact that it is a vampire romance. This book was just, I literally picked it up because it looked like Twilight. I thought it was gonna be like a funny Twilight parody. I was just so intrigued and I actually ended up loving this series. It follows a girl named Grace. At the beginning of the story, her parents have just passed away in an accident. So now she has to go and live with her only remaining relatives, which are her uncle and her cousin. They live in Alaska. Her uncle is actually the dean or the headmaster, I don't remember the term, of this boarding school in Alaska called Katmere Academy. So now Grace is going to 
attend this academy, live there with her cousin, with her uncle, and this is her new life. And right as she shows up at the school, it is like not what she's used to. She is from California, so it's like the freezing cold. You have to put on like 14 layers of clothes, but she shows up and within two minutes of walking in the door, she encounters a tall, dark, brooding, mysterious boy named Jackson Vega, who is not at all welcoming to her. Like right off the bat, he's like, get out of here, go home, you don't belong here, like this isn't the right place for you, just like go back to where you came from, like complete jerk to her. And Grace has a tongue on her, like she does not put up with it. She's like, excuse me, who do you think you are? Like, I'm here for a reason, I have nowhere else to go, like this is, my uncle is the dean here, like I'm going here, get over it. So Grace, you know, starts going to this school and right away she realizes that something is just not quite normal, not quite right here, like there's something she's clearly missing, like, there's just more to it than meets the eye. But yes, her and Jackson's relationship evolves. I don't wanna like give anything away, but like we obviously know like Jackson is a vampire, like that is the point of the story. But there's also other supernatural like creatures and elements and like magic systems to this story that are really like unique and different and other characters that come in, male characters to be specific that are big fan is all I have to say. They want to protect Grace with their life quite literally, which also includes anybody that is willing to threaten Grace's life is going to have to answer to them. And it's a great time. This story, it's not like the greatest piece of literature I've ever read in my life, but like this story in this series is just like one of the easiest, most addicting reads I've ever experienced. If you were a fan of Twilight or just a fan of like vampire romance in general, I feel like this series is literally like Vampire Diaries meets Legacies because of that like boarding school aspect. Like if you were a fan of that, I promise you will eat up this series. So next, I wanna talk about the book in the series that I have talked about relentlessly on this channel, but it is for a good reason because it is just so freaking good. It is the Devil's Night series by Penelope Douglas. How do I even begin to dive into everything that is this series? I'm just gonna hold one of these because they're very heavy. I'm gonna hold the first book, Corrupt, which by the way, is a standalone novel. If you're not looking to get into an entire series, you can totally just read Corrupt. It still contains the touch her and you die trope, so do not worry. But I highly recommend the entire series because I feel like it just like gets better as it goes. But anyways, if you don't know what this series is about, it follows these four guys that live in this small sort of very wealthy town and their families are all like the top dog, biggest families in this town. They all are just very important to the city, the surrounding area. They're all like politicians, business moguls, basically like nobody messes with them. And these four boys in high school were all the stars of the basketball team. They were the most popular guys in school, but what they're most known for is they're part of this group called the Four Horsemen. So basically the Four Horsemen just wreck havoc, get into trouble, get into mischief. They just do crazy things, but they get away with it because they wear these masks when they're doing it. Everybody knows that it's them, but because they're from these like really powerful families, nobody's gonna say anything because they don't want to like step on those toes or get on the wrong side of the families and the thing that the four horsemen are most known for is devil's night so every year the night before halloween they that is when they like conduct their craziest missions pranks they like go the most nuts on devil's night like vandalism they throw ragers just all sorts of crazy things and all of that is fine and good until one year three of the four horsemen end up getting arrested. Somebody leaks footage of them doing these things and I wanna say frames them, but it's not really framing them because they did actually do it. But they are finally like dethroned. The three of the four boys go to prison and then once this series starts, it's been years later and the boys are now out of prison and they're basically like ready to seek revenge on anybody that played a part in getting them into prison because they really don't know the full story and we don't know the full story either we're like learning it as we go each one of these books is like flashing from the present to the past it's a whole journey but each one of these guys has an involvement with a different girl that all kind of centers around that devil's night and it is just a whirlwind crazy web of a story each one of these books focuses on a different one of the four horsemen and a different relationship they have with a different girl and this series literally contains like every trope under the sun that we love like enemies to lovers boyfriends older brother childhood friends to lovers forced proximity best friends or brother's best friend like it's literally everything everything you can want it is so spicy so just like the best of spice that i've ever read but also just like 
the best, most captivating, suspenseful story I've ever read. But the one trope that does like go across all of these books is for sure touch her and you die. All of these guys are just total like badasses. Nobody messes with them. They don't have any regard for anybody's feelings or anything that they do, but they all have a soft spot for just one girl. And if you mess with that one girl, there's gonna be hell to pay and it's just a fantastic time and I would 10 out of 10 recommend it. The books honestly like you can read Corrupt Alone but seriously like they get better as they go. The last book is my personal favorite but like they're all five stars like it's just a it's a great time just do it. <laughs> While we're on the topic of Penelope Douglas I'm just gonna recommend another Penelope Douglas book that totally fits this trope and this is actually my favorite book by her. I quite literally have thought about this book every single day since I've read it. Like I'm gonna have to reread it soon enough because I just cannot get it out of my brain. It is Credence. I'm just gonna say right off the bat, this book is not gonna be for everyone. Like it is without a doubt the most bonkers, wild, just insane book I've ever read that I can't even believe exists. But I'm so happy that it exists because it just, oh my God. Basically the story follows this girl named Tiernan. Her parents have just suddenly passed away and Tiernan's had a very interesting upbringing because in a lot of ways she was spoiled. Like her parents were very rich sort of celebrities. So she has always had like everything she wanted. She's always lived in a mansion. But the one thing she never really had was like true love from family members because her parents were always like busy. She wasn't a priority for them. She's kind of always just been like on her own. So when her parents pass away, Tiernan believes that she is totally on her own. She's only a couple weeks away from turning 18, but she doesn't believe she has any living relatives until she gets a call from her uncle. And I put air quotes around uncle because he, they don't have any blood relation. He is her dad's stepbrother and they did not have a good relationship with each other. They like literally never hung out. Tiernan had heard of Jake in passing, but has never met him, doesn't really know anything about him. But Jake pretty much calls Tiernan and lets her know like he knows what happened and she's more than welcome to come and stay with him and his two sons if, you know, she doesn't want to be on her own. And Tiernan ends up agreeing. Jake and his two sons, Noah and Caleb, live in this small town in the mountains in Colorado where it literally gets snowed in six months out of the year. And I physically don't have words for this book. I have an entire spoiler free review. I'll actually like link right here if you want like a more in depth explanation of it. But basically, I mean, Tiernan gets to learn what it's like to be a part of a family in a way, be around people that actually like care about you, but also, you know, realizing that everybody has to pitch in and kind of learns to fend for herself because she's living in this like country in the wilderness and there's a major forced proximity trope to this story, but more than anything, each of these guys, like they've always just lived the three of the guys together. And now there's this girl and she is like fresh meat in this small town and they are willing to protect her with everything, quite literally touch her and you die. All of the men, Jake I will mention is like very young for an uncle, like he's like only in his 30s, like late 30s, and then um, Noah and Caleb are around Tiernan's age, like a little older. But um, they all grow a very deep fascination and interest and uh, feelings uh, for Tiernan. I literally, <laughs> I don't know how to speak about this book, but it's wild and it's so good like I know it just sounds like it's like a crazy fest but truly like the ending of the book kind of made me cry like it has a beautiful ending and the whole ride is just crazy but touch her and you die for sure and just like it's great <laughs> so the next book I want to talk about is something totally different than I've ever done or talked about on this channel because it is actually a Wattpad story I know Wattpad gets a bad name but truly they are some of the most like talented writers on that app like I don't understand why they give us our talent for free the amount of work and effort that goes into writing a book is insane and the fact that they just like give it to us I will forever be thankful for it in a lot of ways I like grew up on Wattpad I still to this day read Wattpad stories I don't really talk about them on my channel that much because I, I'm not consistent with it and it's all over the place and they're all basically Harry Styles fanfics like I literally have no shame and not everybody wants to hear about those but I am going to talk about a Harry Styles fanfic right now because it fits this trope so perfectly and when I was putting this video together like I couldn't stop thinking about this so I'm like screw it I'm just gonna 
tell you guys about it. It is called Stall and it is by Mystery Mixtapes on Wattpad. I'm definitely going to link it down below if you guys are interested in reading it. This is probably, I think definitely, my second favorite Harry Styles fanfic of all time. The first favorite does not fit this trope at all, so that's why we're not talking about it. But anyways, if you're not familiar with like Wattpad or the fanfic world, this story is an AU, meaning it's an alternate universe. So essentially like it's just a book, like it, it's nothing to do with actual Harry Styles. It's just a completely made up story in a made up world. I mean, it's in Australia, but you know what I mean? It's not Harry Styles. It's just you picture the main character as him. You know, are we on the same page? I just want to put that out there. But this story, oh my God. It follows this girl named Abby and the book basically starts out where Abby has gone to a club with her friend. Abby is like very innocent, has had like little to no experience in life. And she goes to this club with her friend cause she drags her there. And she ends up seeing this very mysterious, attractive man from far away. She feels completely drawn to him, can't get her eyes off of him, but he's like so completely intimidating. He looks like he freaking runs and owns the place. Like everybody is looking at him walking by. And for some reason he makes a beeline for Abby. She's literally like hiding behind her friend, but he's like, oh. I love nicknames and books and he calls her Little Mouse and he's like, where are you hiding from, Little Mouse? Pretty much it's made clear from the get-go, like Harry does not do relationships, he does not do romance, like that is not his thing, but he's willing to give Abby like one great night of her life and she's honestly willing to take it because she just wants experience, she wants to do something wild, like she's young and she's ready to like put herself out there and do something crazy. So her and Harry end up having this like, one night stand that we don't really get to see a lot of because it's revealed more later in the book. But they have this one night stand and it's like a very memorable thing. But then the book fast forwards a few years and Abby now is in a relationship with someone new and she is a photographer. Like that's her job that she's always loved and like wanted to do. And she ends up walking down the street and getting a text that's like, I spy a little mouse. And it's in a whole new like city, but basically like Harry sees her from his apartment and he asks her to like come up there. And so this is where they've like reunited and Abby has obviously no interest in Harry because she now has a new relationship, but Harry is very freaking persistent with her and he wants her to come and take pictures and be a photographer for that same club that they were at originally. It's kind of his club, like he's involved there, but Harry, we learn, like, he is ruthless in the story. It is a dark Harry fanfic, so he is, again, like, not about the romance. He doesn't do relationships. He has a very dark, twisted past and is involved in some very dark things currently, but, like, he, again, just has a soft spot for Abby and, like, cannot get her off of his mind and, like, cannot leave her alone no matter what he does, and he hates it, and you can see that he hates it because he's dangerous and like doesn't want to get her involved in this stuff but he can't stay away she can't stay away again she's in a relationship it's just a whole like ridiculously suspenseful journey like this story is so freaking good like i read the entirety of it so quickly like i did nothing with my life for like the few days that i read this story it was so good but 100 percent again fits this trope harry is bonkers and even though it is like a wattpad story and it is very spicy this story has like the best character development like it blew my mind i thought about it for weeks after finishing it i read this story years ago and i'm honestly still thinking about it so totally if you're into wattpad or even if you're not the book is free it's on wattpad give it a chance stall so freaking good so next completely switching up the genres here i'm going to talk about a book that like if you are on any form of book social media You've either read this book or seen it a million times at this point, like I shouldn't even have to say it, but it's It Ends With Us by Colleen Hoover. This is completely different from any book I've talked about thus far, and if you haven't read this yet, you're like, touch her and you die, like how does this fit in this trope? I assure you that it does, pretty much, just like basic synopsis. This book follows a girl named Lily, and we're pretty much seeing two love stories happen in this book at one time. Her present day love story with this guy Ryle that she just met, Ryle is quite literally like the dream guy. He's successful, he's smooth, he's funny, he's attractive. Like every box you could possibly check, like Ryle is mwah, amazing. And you're seeing this love story with Ryle unfold, but at the same time, Lily has just uncovered this journal um, where she has basically recounted this love story of the first time she did fall in love in high school with this boy named Atlas. Atlas went to high school with her, but he was actually homeless. His parents, he had issues with his parents and his family, and he was actually like, shacking up in this house behind Lily's that 
nobody was currently living in and so they ended up forming this like really deep intense bond and you're seeing this kind of like every other chapter you're like seeing that love story you clearly know like something happened between atlas and lily that like made their relationship end or made them kind of like go apart from each other and then you're also seeing like ryle and her like getting on and this book is hard to talk about because it there's a big aspect of it that is a big spoiler but it's also like a big trigger warning thing i went into this book totally blind and it is one of the most like beautifully written stories i've ever read like it's like maybe one of the most impactful books i've ever read like i truly think that every person should read it but i will warn you it's like a roller coaster of emotions and pain like it's wild but definitely the touch her and you die trope does exist in this book i'm not gonna say from who you're gonna have to figure that out by yourself but like verbatim it happens and it fits and it just makes the entire situation and story so much more like Ugh, crazy and intense and yeah if you haven't read this yet just do it but i'm just gonna warn you you're gonna need like a solid three days to recover from the emotional turmoil that is this book but it's worth it i promise so the next book i'm going to talk about is one that i actually just read in the last week and i swear i cannot stop thinking about this book no matter what i do it is flock by kate stewart in all honesty the entire ravenhood series by kate stewart you kind of have to read it in one go that's just the way that it is the first two books were released within a week of each other they're really one complete story but she just like split them up so they weren't super long but this book i swear to you is literally corrupt or just the devil's night series in general meets credence like i swear it's like these books got married and you just like sprinkled in a big old cup of pain but like good pain it's that pain that makes you like remember that you can feel and you still have emotions and i need that reminder more often than i'd like to admit but yes this story follows a girl named cecilia she has just moved to this small town again the small town trope it's literally in like so many of these books but she's just gone to move in with her estranged father is estranged the right word for that basically her and her father have never really had much of a relationship it's always kind of been like her and her mom on their own her dad has always supported her financially he's like super wealthy he owns like all these companies like loaded beyond belief like gajillionaire um so he's always like financially supported her but they've just never had like an emotional personal relationship like they've would see each other like every once in a while and then finally like several years ago like she was like i'm just not going to visit him anymore because he's very cold like he literally is a ceo he only communicates with her like through email it's a weird situation but they basically have this deal she's gonna get a very large inheritance from him but the only like deal and stipulation of that is that she has to come and work for his company for one year to kind of like put her time in i guess and realize like what she's getting so she moves to this town so that she can work at his plant one of his many plants and she's working there for a year and right at the beginning of the story she goes to like an orientation for the plant and she meets this guy named sean and from there the story literally just like takes off there's not a dull moment in this sean is very like charming mysterious interesting sean has some of the most like amazing quotes i've ever read in a book like i highlighted half of this book i swear but he has this very distinct raven tattoo that she notices right away and he kind of brings her into his friend group and cecilia notices that like a lot of his friends have this raven tattoo and her and sean kind of get into a relationship but there are many other characters and men that come into this story and we kind of learn that all the men that have this tattoo are a part of this sort of like brotherhood and there's a lot to it a lot of inner workings we really don't figure out until like the end of the second book like what that brotherhood even is like what the purpose is but there's a lot of craziness going on within it and a lot of danger and things that cecilia had no idea she was stepping into getting involved in again they tried to keep her away from it one guy in particular like much like the guy in crave is like you don't belong here get her out of here why is she here we don't want you but it's because there are feelings that we cannot deny we want to protect you blah 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 i guess a lot of these books are really similar but we love it we eat it up um it's just a wild ride and again these guys in this series will protect cecilia with everything they have touch her and you die <laughs> and the last and final book i'm going to talk about in this long ass video you guys are welcome is my favorite book i think i've read all year 
one of my favorite books I've read of all time, uh, From Blood and Ash by Jennifer L. Armentrout. This is a fantasy story, a high fantasy, completely different from anything we've talked about thus far. It is so freaking good. It is basically set in this entirely made up world in this sort of kingdom and the story follows this girl named Poppy. She was chosen at birth to be the maiden. She basically wears this veil all the time. She lives in this castle and it is essentially her duty to once she reaches a certain age she's supposed to ascend. We don't really know what that means. Um, she is very like guarded and looked after because she's supposed to like bring in a new era, save the kingdom. It's like this whole thing. At the beginning of the story Poppy ends up getting a new royal guard. His name is Hawk and um, Poppy being the maiden is not allowed to participate in any sort of fun activities like she literally her face isn't allowed to be seen by anybody she's very like protected and guarded but poppy has this other side to her poppy i swear is like my favorite female character ever written she sneaks out at night she secretly trains with like a trainer to learn how to fight like she very much is an independent woman and she wants to do her duty but like she has a mind of her own and she wants more in life but her and hawk have this undeniable chemistry right off the bat and this story it's so hard to explain because there's so many like inner workings to it i just promise you it's a wild ride and there are vampires there are werewolves there are other things that i didn't even know existed like it is the most amazing built world and story and the chemistry and the dialogue and the spice and just every aspect of the story it's got a badass female heroine it's just so good and hawk quite literally if you touch poppy you die are we sensing a theme here it's just so good and i wanted to include another fantasy book in the series if that's your thing if it's even not your thing i've been trying to get everybody to read this book the entire year since i read it it's like one of my most watched videos on this channel my review of this so if you haven't seen that yet maybe go watch it if you want me to convince you further but yes guys that is my touch her and you die trope book recommendation video. Um, I said I was gonna be brief and I wasn't brief at all, so if you've stayed to the end, you're a real one. Comment down below if you made it until the end, actually. I'll give you a little heart or something. I don't know what else I could do for you, I'm sorry. But yeah, if you guys want any other specific tropes, if you have any requests, like let me know. I would totally be happy to do those. I have a few in mind already that'll be coming up. I have a bookshelf tour coming up. You guys literally message me and comment about it every single day. I promise I'll get to it. Um, follow me on Bookstagram if you haven't already. That's where I give all my updates of things going on and just daily interactions. It's a good time over there. But yeah, I need to stop talking. Thank you guys so much for watching and I will talk to you very soon. Bye.